what is important to other people listening? Like whoever's just putting it on on Spotify, on iTunes. Right. When they listen, when they listen on their iPhone speakers, what are they listening to? It's probably not my perfect, perfect kick drum. <laughs> it's gonna be the vocal. Hey, Jess here. I am at Flux Studios in New York, New York, meeting with tracking and mixing engineer Vera Baramji. What up, Proof and Music? We're here. <laughs> So as a mix engineer, uh, what do you do? So as a mix engineer, I take music that's been recorded uh, and I make it come alive, essentially. So I try and give it depth and dimension. Um, I give it balance. I put you know effects on it that's like compression and reverb and UEQ things so that all the puzzle pieces fit together. I'm a part of the process of making sure it's loud enough so that when you play it next to your other favorite songs, it, it hits the same. And sometimes it, it crosses over into production a little bit mm -hmm. in that, you know, you think about like the arc of the song, you think about moving it forward. Maybe sometimes a kick drum's not hitting right, so we put in samples or mix samples in or snares or whatever it may mm -hmm. be. Or sometimes you help with transitions or with drops. So it can really like be quite a few things when mixing and especially um, depending on the artist, because some people want you to be a little more hands-on. Some people, some people left it exactly how they want it, and they just want you to make it louder, better, wider, mm -hmm. brighter. I saw it coming. I knew the second I left it that you would make me regret it. But what could I do? Cause I couldn't hear myself. Okay, so you get the stems. Drop them into Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. Where do you begin? It's always it's always the question. Where am I going to start yeah. when I you know when I bring it in? So the first first thing I do is I make it look the way I want it to look. I like taking the time to set it up so that once I'm like actually getting going and I'm inspired and I know what I want to do, it's easy to know where everything is. Do you have a set of, of instruments that you always like to start with? Like oh I got to dig into the kick right. and the bass first, or does it depend on the song? It totally depends on the tune. For me, it used to, okay, so it used to be kick and bass first. It used to be, I get the drums sounding tight, I get the bass sounding tight. What happens is that I would balance a track too well. Like, I would get it really, really balanced and then get the vocals in, but it's not exciting, it's not fun, because you don't have these elements that like pop out and make it exciting and, and do whatever, and the reason that I don't have that is because I'm so focused on balancing the track, I'm not really listening to the vocals. What should be guiding the song should not be the band, it should be the person singing, right? It's just what people will latch on to. So the thing that Julia asked for that was really important, which um, was that she really wanted her vocal to um, not be thinned out too much. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, the lead yeah. has this pitch going through it the, bed I made. the whole time. Looks like you're glad I'm gone. And the pitch down Thinking vocals God. like that. Um, Whoa, cool. Yeah, which is really That's cool. Super cool. So it's something I like to do, like I, I put it in the track even more than it was before. So with it muted in the track, like the extra pitched vocal, it'll sound like this. But then when I bring in the pitched vocal. It's like a little bit more anchored. So when stuff's feeling really good already, mm -hmm. uh, something I'll do is I'll take like decapitator and lo-fi, and or anything that has a bit of a um, soft clip to it. Mm -hmm. And the idea is I'll, I'll put it on just to make it a little bit more um, dimensional, because it already sounds really good. Like there's nothing yeah. I need to do to it, but it could make it come alive a little bit. So with a little bit of distortion or saturation. 
Um, and I think it just makes it come through the speaker instead of being like just a flat element. Yeah, it's really minor, but it's just like it. It's like she has her own space when I do that. I feel like yeah, like she's in. Like she's in there. She's the anchor. She's standing in the middle of this tornado of a thing. How do you gauge? how much artistic freedom you give yourself. I always ask for a rough mix. So usually I try and get very clear, like what are the things that get you psyched when you listen to it? And what are the things that still stick out to you? And you're like, I wish that could be better. I guess how much freedom I feel I have definitely comes from conversations I have with the artists and the producers yeah. before I even start. Because I've definitely made the mistake of going too far mm -hmm. and taking the reins too much and having too much freedom with it. And I've definitely done the opposite of that, where I've been too timid. And what I've learned is that it's never right or wrong to do either of those things. It's just the best thing to do is get clear with the artist and the producer what they want you to do. I really like when people tell me moods or tell me stories about it. Like, oh man, I was super depressed and walking around in the rain this day and I want it to sound like that. And I'm like, yeah, cool, <laughs> Like, I can get that. Okay, where are we at? <laughs> Drums. Drums, my favorite. Hell yeah. So we have, okay, so we have a couple things happening. One is that we have um, the live drums, which is this. I, I like to do this. I like to carve and boost at the same point sometimes. So like I boosted it uh, around 250, mm -hmm. like a dB and a half. With, with the, you know, 1.15 Q. So it's like wide enough. But yeah. then I notched out this 190 thing because I didn't want it to be too just duh, you know. Right. Um, I took the 4K down quite a bit and then it rolled off a lot. So if I bypass it, let's see. You hear that? Oh, wow. Yeah. And then I also use the distressor on it. Mm. Which is helpful. <laughs> yeah. With that, it, it's now with it. It just really it puts it forward. It's like got that, and it also uh, holds that low end uh, that I made mm -hmm. tight. You know, which is really nice. And then, because what's happening on top of it is that we have these other, um, we have these other drums. All that on top of what we just heard. Oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so I was confident in like rolling off that high end of the live snare because this had so much high end. What a great producer. Okay. I know. So you, all you together really, it's like you, this. You just... These are all the drums happening live in program. Oh my God. So you had to like really work to piece this stuff together. I did. So these days, obviously, a lot of bands and artists are self-recording. Um, even not just like local level, but a lot of high level bands as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you find as a mix engineer that, that that makes your job a little trickier? I used to. Yeah. <laughs> I used to be like, I used to have this feeling of um, being really nervous because I didn't want to put something out there that didn't sound good. Yeah. But I also felt somewhat limited if things just weren't recorded very well, mm -hmm. right? So two things happened. One is that I got good at sample replacing and <laughs> I got really good at at fucking things up with EQ. I was like, I don't know if I can curse. I'm sorry. Of course you can. Of course you can um, absolutely say fuck. Cool. And part of what got me really good at that is messing up things that I recorded and then mixing it and then making it better, right? Yeah. So yeah, so that used to make me really nervous, but I don't get so nervous about it anymore because, again, I think that people aren't as picky as you and I are. I'm not going to kill myself to make it sound like something it's not. So I'm trying to like find the balance of leaning into how it was recorded and how it sounds and understanding that you're making a time capsule. Yes. You know what I mean? Because like every like like '80s, they're known for like these big gated drums. Mm -hmm. Like like. 60s, you're thinking like everyone in one room, one room with these tight little sounds, you know what I mean? Which is like a mono recording. Right. Like, and yeah. it's like the best shit you've ever heard, and like yep. you bop to it like crazy because mm -hmm. the, music the music is so good. good. Yeah. So, like, you're kind of capturing this time right now. Yeah. This is a profit base. 
Of course it is. Of course it is. I like, love it so much. <laughs> Oh, Ooh, what? I pitched this bass down. Did you? I did. So, okay, so because this was the only bass in the track, this profit bass, um, it doesn't actually have a ton of low end information. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so you were like, let me take care of that. <laughs> yeah. So I doubled it. I pitched it down an octave with just like. Barely audible. Here's the original. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> oh, that's funny. So if I play it together yeah. and I don't play the pitched one, let's see what it's like. Put it in. It's really light, but I didn't want to like totally change the tone, but I did put it in there just because I felt like it needed some like low end stuff. Totally worked. Yeah, it does. Right? It it's totally worked. Right. <laughs> yeah. How do you know when a mix is finished? How do I know when a mix is finished? Yeah, That's I always mean... the question. Yeah. <laughs> I basically carve and carve and carve mm -hmm. an effect and pan and make space and push until I can't think of anything else to do. And when I can't think of anything else to do, I play it down and I do something else. I answer an email, I answer a text, whatever. Something pops out, I like stop it, fix it, and then I start again from the top and keep playing it down. And as soon as something pops out, I stop it, fix it, and do it again, and I keep playing it down. And as soon as I can play it down, it's good to go. I really like putting everything in its place. Yeah. Like I really like this feeling of making an image and like, and like being very precise about whatever, if my vocals are here and my keys are doing this and my drums are here and like choosing the things that just pop up here and here and like come back and forth, right? I just, it like really is, a, it's fun. It's yeah. a fun little puzzle. Looks like you're glad I'm gone. Thank you God for saving you from what you used to want. Oh, you glad you got for